Optimizers, and welcome back to Munich, Germany. We are here at Salona Cello Sphere. My name is Savannah Peterson. Delighted to be joined by Rob Stretche. I feel smarter already. We've only had one interview. Uh, I, I, I love this. I, I mean, <laughs> having actually lived on an oil refinery, I, 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 I understand when Exxon was on stage talking about the complexities of SAP and all the data and things like that. So this, this to me is near and dear to my heart. So we're gonna have to unpack a little more of that story some other time. But I love that. Yeah, Let's cool. welcome Divya to the stage. Thank, Thank you. you so much for taking the time. Such a busy week for you. Very Thank exciting. You. This is fabulous. One thing I want to bring up, since you just mentioned the keynote, one of the slides on the stage there with Exxon was that it doesn't take it doesn't just take a village anymore. It takes an ecosystem. Yes. And you so kindly briefed us on that. Can you explain the big ecosystem announcements for Salonis today? Yes. I mean, so I think there were a couple of different announcements that anchor on the ecosystem. The reason why that's so important is that when you think about the extent of what customers want to do, right? It's every process. And it's in every industry. And that's not feasible for a team of 3,000, no matter how ambitious, how hardworking, to be able to go after. So our, our strategy is really to build a platform to give the tools to not only our customers, but also our partners to enable them to actually create the solutions and go after all these different areas of opportunity. So there were two announcements that you, you heard. One is around new partner applications. I think both Alex and I both talked about this, where partners are creating solutions in industries like banking and oil and gas and chemicals for use cases like cross-border payments or tax compliance. And those are solutions that are leveraging our best practices on how to actually build solutions that can get to value really fast. But they're coming from our partners, and honestly, that's just the tip of the spear. We have more coming for patient journey and a lot of use cases after that. But I think where a lot of the real excitement is on the floor that I've been hearing so far is around our announcement around agents. And so we call it agency. An agency, it's a pun. We have to enable people. Love it. Yeah. I, I like that I have to explain the pun. Yeah. But um, <laughs> it, it enables people to be able to build agents in really the development platform of their choice with the data and the context that's coming from Salonis. So, of course, that today means Amazon Bedrock, that means What's Next Orchestra, and of course, the Microsoft Copilot Studio. Uh, but I think that's incredibly exciting for our customers because they're going to be able to then build in the platforms that they're increasingly going to start to invest in, they can leverage pre-built agents that are coming from other partners. We showed or talked about Rolio on stage, but they're again one as many. And then I think a lot of customers don't yet have the skill set and the resources fully in-house. So they're going to be able to lean on these dedicated delivery partners like IBM, Accenture, EY, to be able to really help them get off the ground with their agent building portfolio. Yeah, I mean I think to your to your question and to the whole net you talked about it being a network when you were talking about the example of one of the, you know, a distributor, with yeah. how they were getting that. And I think it's not just a portal, it's a network, and bringing these all together. That kind of expand on that, because I think to me that yeah. was really key to where things like, you know, process intelligence graph and other things come into this entire story. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to steal it's not just a portal, it's a network, if you don't mind. Go right ahead. Uh, because yeah, I think that really goes yeah. right to the heart. Yeah. It goes right to the heart of it because it's, it's not about just a, a one time or a ad hoc yeah. status check or communication. That's how most of us communicate now, right? It's like a one way email, somebody else in different department or a different company, and it's like, hey, here's my update. But this is about how can you do intelligence sharing, not just data sharing, yeah. in real time? How can I make sure that I am doing that? in a way that conveys the process insights that I have on my side with my customers or with my suppliers and, and of course, vice versa. And I think what, what enables that, that foundation is this process intelligence graph. The way that many of our customers describe it is that it gives them this common language for how things are really running and where things can be improved across their different systems and across their different departments. And the announcement that we made around networks is really about how do I take that common language and extend it even further across the different stakeholders that I, I work with. And what that means is that you then don't have this like finger pointing over like, oh, it's you, it's you. It really is like, well, what is the data set? And then you don't have this, this back and forth. And you can really then start to proactively avoid some of the delays or the challenges or the obstacles that otherwise you run into. Yeah, I, I think to me that that tied with building agents where you want them yes. to build them either in the Salonis platform itself or all the way to one yes. of your partners. I, I think that to me was really a key. Where, where do you see 
organizations, like kind of the use cases where, hey, I know there was the hackathon yesterday yes. that we heard about. I mean, very exciting. Very exciting. Very exciting. Very exciting. Yeah. How, do you, how do you see people leaning in? Because to me, and to we do a lot with the Cube and the Cube research, we do a lot of discussion around how you really can't build agents if you don't know the process you're trying to modernize. Yeah with that and optimize. And I think I, w- I would add to that, it's not just about building the agents, it's also about where do you put the agents in your process? How do you orchestrate them to make sure that they don't sort of just get plopped into the existing automation stack and investments you've already been making? People have been putting a lot of good time, energy, effort, money into RPA, into backend automation, into complex workflows. Nobody should be suggesting that all of that just gets tossed out the window. The question is, how do you optimize that? And then how do you bring agents to play to really dramatically increase the ROI that you can get from all the investments that you're, you're putting in? So I think that's the one extension that I would, I would add. But I think we're seeing a huge amount of enthusiasm around uh, not just agents, but also, also, also co-pilots that you can spin up for your teams because sometimes more automation, sometimes you can information in the hands of people that need it. Um, and so we're seeing that customers are building a lot of co-pilots for their organizations. They're saying, you know, one for the finance team, one for the supply chain team. Sometimes they even have like multiple within a, one given business unit. But the use cases right now are, are of course, starting with our core, which is what are really process-specific use cases around order blocks, how can we move them? We heard that in the keynote. A different one that I, 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 I know that a customer is pursuing is they have a team of about six or seven people that are responsible for looking at order confirmations that are coming in by email. So it's free text. And then they have to manually enter it into an ERP system. This is like seven people who are entering email confirmations into an ERP. Uh, and that's the kind of work that they're wanting, like the seven people are wanting to build this agent for. Because then they can spend their time doing a lot of other stuff. And that's a process that can get moved along that much more quickly. Um, and that to them is really important because the time that it takes to get the order confirmations in is what's delaying sometimes getting the goods followed up on or getting deliveries in. And that's, of course, really, really critical. We're really able to solve process optimization challenges we weren't able to solve before. And this, yeah. this process intelligence graph, and I'm curious if you think this, since this is such an exciting announcement with all the different components of the ecosystem, do you think that, that what's what you're working on right now is actually going to help the enterprise make AI real and, and deliver that true impact and ROI that these companies are craving? I think the only answer to that for me could be yes, <laughs> uh, but but I'll, I'll tell you why I think it's a yes. Yeah. So I think one one of the challenges that you're really seeing with a lot of companies right now is that they are struggling still to kind of find the right use cases when it comes to AI. Yeah. The nature of how slowness works is that it looks at the process or the processes plural and says. Where is the opportunity for value? And then anything, AI, automation, DAPs, dashboards, it's all part of the how, for like how do you address it? Which means that it's a fundamentally a use case first and a value first approach. So you look at like the order block use case that we covered in the keynote. That's what looking at the use case thing, we know that credit blocks are getting in the way of the outcome we want to have. How can we improve? And then you build an, an, an assistant using AI that can actually help you to get there. And I think that is one of the, the most important reasons for why it's so, so critical to look at where you're going to actually be building to actually get that impact. Yeah, I, I love to hear it. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think building off of that, I think one of the things that I found interesting is on the data geek and if you like yourself, I'm yeah. a product person and I kind of look at it. One of the things that we've been seeing is that AI has been introducing uh, silos of automation. And I think one of the Celicor announcements was also with the APIs yeah. and the movement of data was really exciting. Kind of help people understand that because you're, you're taking data not just out of SAP and yeah. you know uh, CRM systems and ERP and but out of things like Databricks and Snowflake and Celicor, the enhancements that you have there it would seem like a breakthrough for your customers. I think I think so. I mean, so we were in a, a, a lucky position. Thank you to our engineering team that we were already um, the, the most scalable and the fastest on the market. But when you have customers that are really pushing you because they have the vision of I want to be able to bring in this many records and I need to go at this kind of latency, that made us really take a closer look at how we can up level the stock even further. And so now, as you say, not only can we bring in data from all of these different systems to really unify, but we're also able to do it at a much more significant scale. Now, why is that relevant? It, it's, it's really relevant around use cases that where you're looking at things like seasonality, or you're in an industry that just has a very high volume data records, which is actually quite a few of our customers. Most sales, many yeah. Yeah. Exactly. 
But the other uh, scenario is when you need really low latency, when you need mm-hmm. uh, like a really mm-hmm. real-time use case, you want to use it operationally. Customers are now using Clonus, not just in an accounts payable or in order management, but increasingly for like shop floor manufacturing. They're increasingly using it for customer service. They're increasingly using it for how they actually do picking and packing. So it becomes closer and closer to the heart of their business model. And that means it has to be like, as soon as the update happens in Tempest system, it's coming in. Yeah. And it has bigger and bigger impact as a result. Plus, yeah. people get excited about the technology because it's making their job easier and more efficient. All right, I got one last question for you because time is flying by. One of your slides talked about this time last year. Yes. Now, I want to challenge you to look a bit in the future. And when we sit down with you at the next show yes. this year, what do you hope to be able to say that you can't yet say today, this time next year? It's a great question. I, I mean, my hope for, for a year from now is that we see the, the, the footprint of the, the processes that, that we see in every company around the globe um, being much further in terms of those processes are being analyzed, they're being improved. I think AI will be a big part of that equation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so what I look forward to is seeing more confidence and more trust uh, in the AI co-pilots and agents that are put forward because people feel like, yes, I understand why we're doing them. They're grounded in the right context and the right data. It's coming from sources that I've already validated, sources that I already trust. I'm able to monitor these agents to really make sure that they're operating the way that we want, mm-hmm. they're giving us the returns, but also that they're being deployed where they're going to have the most effect. But all of us have learned from the uh, experiences that we all had with automation deployments in the past, and that all that good learning can be put to really good use in the way in which we treat AI going forward. Yeah, I, I, I love that because I think one of the things that you, you said in the keynote as well is it's where the model needs the mapping, and I, I, I add meets reality. Yeah. So I, I love to see that <laughs> next year. That would be great. And we can't wait to break all of that down 12 months from now. Jimmy, thank you so much for taking your time today. It's been a busy and exciting day for you, Rob. Always a pleasure. I thank all of you for tuning in to our coverage here at Salona Celesphere in Munich, Germany. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching The Cube, the leading source for enterprise tech news.